Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you might be watching this. It's Addison Coffee back again with another episode of Coffee with Coffee. Uh, I got another guest with me this time. Uh, he spent four years as a football player at the University of Kentucky. Now he spends his time traveling the world and uh, playing with exotic animals. Max Strong, how's it going, man? I'm good. How are you? I don't know if well, I, was, I, was, I was playing football. I was I was chilling. I was on the team. You know how it was, the kicker life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't gonna say that though. I was, gonna I was collecting my the hype. And the... Nah, I don't need the hype. I was collecting my free gear and my food. <laughs> hey, that was uh, that was just as good as anything else though. I, Bro, I still got all my nutter. I got all my nutter shoes. That's what I'm saying. All my stuff is in my <laughs> closet here somewhere. So no, it was, oh, it was yeah. good times. Um, nah. so you know, I just uh, how you been, man? How's the quarantine treating you? You know, what what have you been up to these last I guess month? We've really been in this <laughs> weird state. Honestly, uh, I mean, it's it's affected some things for sure, but I spent a lot of my time, um, you know, kind of looking after and caring for animals. So that can't stop. You know what I mean? The animals still got to get taken care of. They still got to eat no matter if we're on quarantine or not. So a lot of yeah. things have changed, but not everything's changed. Yeah, no, for sure. So so you mentioned animals. Um, what was it? You know, I know you I think you were beginning to volunteer at Wildlife in Need while you were still at UK, um, but kind of once you graduated, that kind of took a whole new, whole new stance in your life and kind of took you know took a front seat. What uh, what was it about the animals kind of that drew you to them? Honestly, I mean I've loved them my whole life. You know, my mom even when, when I was little, we'd go on trips and she'd find some type of animal encounter or something to get us up close and around animals, and it just it really instilled that love that I have. Um, you know, from a very young age. So it was, it's always been a part of me. And it's just, you know, when we're growing up, I mean, I, I, I played a lot of sports. I mean, that's, that's what we kind of did. Um, so it was, it was really once I got done with that chapter of my life that I was able to kind of dive into a new chapter, which for me has, has been animals. And I mean, I've, I never thought I would get to do some of the things I've gotten to do. I mean, traveling all over the country, all over the world, um, have people reaching out to me now wanting me to come, you know, visit their animals and see what they do. And it's just, it's been a crazy ride for sure. No, it's, uh, it's unlike anybody else I know, you know, I'm, uh, consider myself blessed to call you a friend and some of the things that I see on your Instagram are things that, uh, I don't think I would even come close to doing. So, you know, kudos <laughs> to you, man. You say that, it, but you would do it. No, it's, it looks like some cool stuff. So you mentioned traveling yeah. a little bit, um, I know if people don't follow you on Instagram, it's at Max Strong. They should. There's a lot of people that do, and a lot of people are probably missing out on that. But uh, hey, if they like know, it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I'm gonna keep doing me either way. Exactly. No, that's what it's all about, man. But yeah. you've gotten to travel. I mean, Miami, Canada, different countries. Like, how many countries have you been to? And is there one that really stands out to you? It's not as many as you think. Like, I've never been that far. Um, most of the, the different countries I've, I've been to are more like Caribbean, Central and South America type stuff. And, and that's really what I enjoy. I like those crystal, crystal clear waters. I can swim around in the ocean and explore. And I like the jungles and, and getting out and doing that. Um, if one really stuck out to me, it'd probably be Costa Rica just because they have the perfect mix of, of everything for me. I mean, there's animals everywhere. Um, the government there places a lot of emphasis on protecting the animals in the wild and preserving the land, which I think is awesome. Um, so they've set up really cool ways for people to kind of, you know, do ecotourism out there in the wild, but also do it in a safe way that still respects um, nature and the animals. And I really like jumping off waterfalls, too. So I, uh, Costa Rica is a good spot for me. No, it's uh, I've seen the pictures. It looks beautiful. I I haven't really had uh, ever had the urge to travel out of the country, but I've seen all your pictures and it's slowly with all this quarantine at home, it's becoming uh, an itch I can't scratch. I think I'm about to travel out of the country before too long. Oh, go. Yes. Everyone, <laughs> people always, for some reason, everyone has this assumption that traveling outside of the country is just crazy expensive and impossible to do. I literally, the last time I went to Costa Rica, I got a flight out of, I think it was Columbus. My flight was like $300 round trip to go to Costa Rica. You can't travel um, in the States for that cheap. No, I can't even go to Miami for $300. So <laughs> it was literally, I mean, granted, it was a spirit flight. And some people are sketched out by certain airlines. But I've been flying Spirit a plane, and Allegiant. Man. Gonna, a plane's a plane, man. It's going to get me where it's supposed to go. You yeah, I mean, pay. it might not be that comfy on the inside. But Spirit, Allegiant, and Frontier have taken me a lot of places that I could not have gone <laughs> otherwise. So Shameless plug for those three airlines. Get this man free. Yeah. Flight, please. Yo, they deserve it. They deserve <laughs> it. They're putting people on. They're giving people 
opportunities that they would never have otherwise. So I'm, I'm for it. No, no, that's awesome. Have you like in any of these trips you've taken, I know a lot of like the places you go, like it's, it's contained animal. It's like, you're not just like out in the jungle with lions. Have you ever had like an, like a experience like that where you are like just in the wild? Yeah. So I, I mean, I've definitely seen animals in the wild, different places. Uh, the one that really sticks out to me is Costa Rica. I think that's why I love it so much. Um, there's a place on like, it's on the, basically the Southern tip of the country. It's called Corcovado National Park. And I've done a few little trips out there where you literally have to, you have to access it by boat. So we're taking this tiny little boat, riding these waves to go get off of this beach. And the last hike, oh, dude, it was amazing. Literally, we got off of this beach and like walked in through this little path. There's, there's no buildings, there's nothing there. And I mean, we saw howler monkeys, we saw squirrel monkeys, we saw a mom and a baby tapir. Uh, we saw so many different things within the first like 10 minutes of being there. And it really, I mean, it opened my eyes to see what's possible without the humans, you know, getting in the way and tearing down the it's land. Just, it's, their habitat. So, it's their habitat 24 seven. It's all them. Yeah, I know. And it's really cool to see. So I, I love doing that. Obviously I work with a lot of animals in captivity and that's what I'm involved with for the most part. Um, and I think people get the misconception that I, you know, I put these animals in captivity or I, I, I don't even know. People literally think that you're like out here, I'm out here trapping animals and bringing them in so I can play with them. And that's not the case at all. Like the animals that I've worked with and visited that are in captivity are going to be in captivity either way. So for me, it's about, you know, devoting my time and resources and whatever I can do to give them the best life possible. I really wish that they all could live in the wild and that every place was like Costa Rica where they place a, you know, emphasis and value on protecting the land, but they just, a lot of countries don't do that. A lot of people, you know, in countries, they're going to take the money that they get from the tourism, uh, whereas Costa Rica sacrifices a lot of that money to protect the animals. So I do wish that all the animals were in the wild and that's how people were viewing them. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to just turn my back and not pay attention to the ones in captivity that need to be taken care of. So it's, it's a weird place and it's kind of a fine line, but I don't know. I've, I'm creating my own path, I guess you would say. No, for sure. I mean, from the day I met you, you've been someone that, you know, you rock to the beat of your own drum, you're going to create your own path. And, you know, it's, you, you taught me some things that I can, you know, new ways to live my life, new, new uh, vision to take on things and couldn't thank you more for that. But you spoke a little bit about cool. animals in captivity and, you know, how, how people want to complain about that or pe everybody has their opinion. It's just like anything else in the world. So I'm going to have to assume you've watched Tiger King. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I hate to even ask, but I feel like if, if I don't ask, you know, the closest person I know that does that in real life, like, what did you think of that? Did you think it was like accurate, inaccurate? Like, what, what are your thoughts on all that? I mean, obviously it's a Netflix series. It's, it's not a documentary. It's, they dramatize, I don't even know. They dramatize a lot of things that took place in that, but there's a lot of truth in it too. I mean, I can't sit here and act like, a lot of those things don't happen in certain places. Um, that, that stuff definitely exists. Uh, but I think the biggest issue really with it all is that a lot of the people um, that you see in there and a lot of people in general, they, they let their egos get in the way. They, they want to be the biggest and the best. And they start to care more about themselves than they care about the animals. And, and I do believe that a lot of people get started because of a care for the animals but somewhere along the line i don't know if money starts to come in or what happens but it seems like a lot of people and like you saw in that documentary they they kind of lose sight of you know doing it for the animals and they start to do it for themselves it becomes about them instead of becoming about the animals and i think that was really my biggest takeaway from it and it was something that i thought was really sad to see um truthfully it was I don't know. You you saw what happened, and the animals are ultimately the ones that get that suffer from that. It's not like the people do all these things and do this. I mean, you see Joe and and that zoo he had out there. He's in jail now, uh, right or wrong, whatever it may be. He's there, and who who's caring for those two hundred animals, three hundred animals that he has out there now? You know, someone who may not have the experience that they need. So it's just it's sad when people, you know, let their wants, desires, whatever it may be, get in the way of caring for the animals and the animals are ultimately the ones that have to suffer. So that's, that was really what I took away from, from that. No, no, for sure. So 
you know, I know at one point in that um, they show like a like a graph of like big cats in captivity in the United States, and there were hundreds. Would you say that Thousands. the people who would you say that the people who act like the documentary are in the minority, and that the majority of people that do have big cats in captivity are, you know, like yourself, they care for the animals. That's where their passion lies. Their passion doesn't lie in you know YouTube fame or striking their rich. You know, they've got the animals' best interest at heart. That's hard to say. I mean, I, I think anyone who starts off uh, getting those animals, I mean, no one does it strictly for the money. Like, there's not enough money in it to be like, wow, I want to go get a bunch of these exotic animals, pay all these bills that it costs to take care of them. And Time, that's my, my business plan. You know, I think that over time, they'll, they'll maybe, you know, hit something where a lot of those places let people come pet the cubs and, and that's how they made their money. So they brought in a lot of money that they weren't used to seeing. And then it turned into that. Um, but it's hard to say. I mean, it's, I don't know. I hate to generalize and say some people care and some people don't or majority or that. I mean, everyone's different. I do believe um, that a lot of that most people do care. I mean, I, I don't know. It's hard to say really. I think they do though. Yeah, no, I completely understand. And I think, you know, more now than ever, people are, especially with all this time at home, everybody's watched Tiger King. People are using their social media to kind of voice their opinion about rights and wrongs. And, you know, I think you, I mean, you're the only person I follow that does what you do. And I feel like constantly, you know, you're spreading positivity about, you know, our world, the animals, the situations, you're spreading positivity about anything. So like, if you could say something to, you know, all these people out here speaking out, like what, what would that be? Oh, geez. It's a deep question. Coffee with coffee goes deep out here. It's loaded. Um, loaded question. Yeah, it is. I, I know your last your last Instagram post did spread a that's lot. That's what of, I was gonna kind of refer spread, back spread to. Spread a really, lot of posi- positivity and kind of led me to that question. Yeah, and, and I guess that's what, what I would want to say really. Um and it's a long ass caption. You can go read it. But <laughs> the gist of it the gist of it really is just that I think people have lost their connection with with animals and with wildlife and with nature even. Um we've started to let money really take over. And it, it, we're able, we're willing to destroy almost anything that we need to in order to get money. A lot of these big corporations and, and people like that. So I really, I do what I do because I want to try to, you know, spark a love for animals in people's hearts, get them feeling a certain type of way about animals so that maybe next time someone sees a cougar in the wild, they, they don't want to go shoot it. Or next time a, a company is about to expand and build a new planter or whatever it may be they're like oh okay well maybe we shouldn't build it here because you know these animals call this place home um and it it really is a choice that a lot of people have um so i I don't know who all i I have to reach with that but i just want people to feel connected to the animals so they at least think twice before they just destroy the the land that's theirs or kill the animals in the wild and I don't know. It's crazy. You talked earlier about uh, the tigers in captivity versus the wild and, and all of that. And it's like, everyone wants all these animals to be in the wild, but the same people that say that are the ones who are supporting companies and who own companies that are destroying all of the wild. So it's like, I don't know how you have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Like what, what do you really want? Are you willing to sacrifice money? to protect these animals that you say you want to live in the wild and that you care about. And it's like, it's, it's just wild. So I just want to get people to start to care about them again, and at least make it a thought in people's, in people's minds before they go do these things and destroy these things that they have been for decades now. No, no, completely, completely. No, uh, your, uh, your passion's contagious. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very evident that that means the world to you and that those animals that, that you do care deeply for them. So, so keep being awesome. Keep being yourself, man. Uh, I'll be myself. To, I don't know if I'm awesome, but <laughs> I, I <laughs> depends on the are, day. So. I think you are. More, more, more days than not, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just keep being yourself, you know, keep doing you spreading positivity, man. It's been great to catch up with you and I uh, hope to catch up with you soon. Have a great day, Max. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.